Good afternoon and welcome everyone to our Manac Monday's College Admissions Questioning and, Answer and Answering Panels. As you can see here today, we have a panel of college experts from a variety of institutions from the Midwest. Speakers here today to represent colleges, uh, public, private, two-year, four-year, in-state, and reciprocity colleges and universities. A bit about Manac, it was established in 1991 and is a non competitive post-secondary collaborative dedicated to improving access to higher education for Minnesota's students of color. The Minnesota Association of Councils of Color, MNAC, works to provide college access opportunities throughout the year, including hosting college fairs, professional development, and scholarships for first-year students. Due to the impacts of COVID-19 on, on the school year last year and this year coming up, it is important for us to find new and creative ways to provide high school students with college search and access opportunities. Therefore, we're excited to bring you this presentation virtually. We will get started with introductions and I will ask each, each panelist to introduce themselves and institution they represent. After the introductions, we will then jump into questions. Um, as a participant, we welcome you to chat questions in the question and answering box and we will ask those questions for you. At the end, we will provide the contact information for those who present today for future follow-up. We'll kick it off with our first college. Thanks. Wonderful, thank you so much, Raul. My name is Jordan Simpson. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm an admissions representative at Lake Superior College and really thankful to be here today to chat with all of you and kind of go through your questions and answers about all the colleges you're gonna hear about today. What I'm quickly gonna go over are a few different things. A few of the programs that Lake Superior College offers, what a little bit about student life and a few things that make LSC unique. So I'll get started. One of the things that you see on the screen is that LSC offers 90 or over 90 certificate, diploma, and associate degree options. So if you wanted to do a year's worth of college or two years worth of college, you can go maybe straight into the working world after finishing up maybe a manufacturing program or a trades program or public safety, transportation, health, you name it. Or maybe you wanted to get your first two years of a bachelor's done, maybe be in the Duluth area, Duluth, Minnesota, try something new if you're not from this area. But what's really great about all these options is the cost saving aspects to it. So we have the third lowest tuition rate in the Minnesota State College system, whether you want to get, you know, two years done and go straight into the working world or do two years and then get your bachelor's, LSC is a great option for that. A few things about student life, you can see that on the screen it references that there's 30 or over 30 different student clubs available on campus. A quick little note about student life. What's great is that you have the opportunity to connect with a variety of students through these student clubs, whether it's something that's hobby related like a photo club or photography, photography club, active minds that maybe is more in the psychology space of everything, art, anime band, or if you wanted to go into a program club. So if you were interested in nursing, we have a nursing club. If you're interested in auto, we have an auto body auto service club. And then same thing for uh, our pilot program, computer technology, welding, et cetera. What's really cool too, is that we also have a United Students group on campus, which really helps students grow in their kind of cultural understand understanding through activities participation in events throughout the community and state. And what's really cool is that it's kind of a group effort and it connects with a variety of different colleges. So it's not just LSC students, you actually get to connect with other students from the other colleges in the Twin Ports too, or the Duluth area, which is really nice. And last but not least, a few things that make LSC unique is that we're ranked as the number one online community college in Minnesota back in 2019. We ranked 15th best in the nation per 2020's best online community college rankings by Guide to Online School. And having the personal class size is so helpful for so many students. Our average class size is 17 students to one instructor, which means if you ever want to get assistance from your teacher, you definitely can, which is really helpful. And the teachers are here and available to give that one-on-one -on -one help. And in conclusion, you just heard a little bit about LSC, about some of our programs we have, a little bit about our student life, and a few things that make us unique. And I'm more than happy to help answer any other questions during the Q&A time. 
back to you. <laughs> UW Lacrosse. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Ana Mendoza. My PGPs are she, her, and hers. I uh, work here as a freshman admissions counselor, but I also had the opportunity to complete my undergrad here as well. So I completed my bachelor's of science in psychology and pre-occupational therapy. So if you have any questions about our psychology program or a pre-health track, I am completely biased, but here to answer any questions that you may have about that. Um, so I'm really excited to be here, answer any questions that you may have, and also represent UWL. Uh, so I just picked out some really common things that we like to get students to know about UWL. And so we have 9,617 undergraduates and 963 graduates. So we do have grad programs right here on campus. We are a four-year institution. And then if you wanted to continue in your master's degree, you could do that right on our campus. We have 101 majors, uh, 30 graduate programs, and two doctoral programs. Uh, so we have plenty that you can choose from. We don't require a student to choose a major right away, which has been really nice for students. You will have plenty of time to choose your major. You will have actually until your junior year, the first semester of your junior year to choose a major. Uh, so that's been really nice. We are ranked number three by the US News Report, so, and also top 100 best values by Kiplinger's. So it's nice to know that people that are not associated with UWL also think UWL is a really good campus. We wanna make sure that we're not nickel and diming you um, for everything that we can, but giving you a really good quality of education as well too. Our average class size is 28 students. So it's a really nice transition. If you think about the classroom settings that you're sitting in, that could possibly be close to your classroom settings. So transitioning into UWL has been fairly easy for individuals. I come from a really small local community um, out in the boondocks. So this was a really nice transition for me. Um, but unlike my small community, it, not everybody knew my business and I didn't know everybody else's business. Right, so I was still able to see some familiar faces in my classroom settings and gave me that sense of belonging. But it was nice that I didn't know everybody's business and I was still getting to know new people every single day here on my university as an undergraduate. We have a 19 to 1 student to faculty ratio. This has been really nice because all of our professors are very open and engaging with students. Uh, we have what's called office hours here. Uh, so I was an incredibly annoying student and was using every single office hour I could use and talk to professors. Um, and now those professors and those faculty members are now references for me for any position or graduate program that I will continue in. Uh, so I definitely recommend being able to find an institution where you're able to connect with your professors in that way. We have a 200 plus student organization. Um, we have anything that's like academic to something as fun as like a cheese eating club uh, where they go around and eat different cheeses. Uh, so if you don't find a group for yourself within those 200 plus organizations, you always can create your own group as well too. It's pretty easy to do at UWL. We have, um, we are division three sports with 71 national titles here at UWL. So we don't do financial aid or scholarships for sports, uh, but it's still available here and active on our community. And then we have the highest student athlete combined GPA in the WAC. Um, so we are excited to be able to say that we do take care of our students and we make sure that this is your education and your education will always come first to us. So with that, I'm excited to hear what kind of questions you have about UWL. All right, uh, hi everyone. Sorry about all the wordings on the slide. I, you know, there's so much to share. Um, so my name is Namwang Palkit. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the multicultural counselor for UMD. Uh, we are a mid-sized campus, so roughly we have around 11,000 students currently. Uh, we also, um, like some other colleges, also have a few professional programs and also master's program as well. Uh, so the two professional programs that we offer is med school and we also have a college of pharmacy. Uh, but our main focus are the undergrad students, um, you know, um, from freshman to senior year. Uh, currently at the UMD campus, we offer more than 160 majors. 
um, including eight pre-professional programs. So we do have a lot of uh, options for students to choose from different, uh, different areas. Uh, we also allow students uh, to come in undecided. So it's a wonderful opportunity for students if you want to explore a little bit more. Um, when I was in college, I did change my major at least three times. So I think you know, a lot of students, did, they do know exactly what they want to do and they have you know, their 10 year plan and there are students who really want to explore. So I think right now 70% of our students do come in undecided. So it's okay if you don't have everything figured out. Um, you know, every college I think has uh, you know, student support services to make sure that you do succeed in college. Uh, one important announcement is we are test optional. Uh, so that is uh, starting next year, we will no longer be requiring ACT uh, as part of the admissions. So um, it's really up to you. You can submit ACT scores. However, we, we, we are no longer using ACT um, as primary factors to make decisions. Uh, when I tell the top three things, the top three reasons why student attend UMD is, first of all, are all of our programs that we offer. So we do have, um, you know, science, our business program, our science program, psychology are some of the top majors at UMD. Uh, second is the... Uh, uh, second is the location. I think location, a lot of students do attend or come to Duluth because of the location as well. And then also is our, um, you know, we have excellent graduate follow-up. So a lot of 97% of our students uh, do uh, further studies or um, find a job within six months of graduation. So that's something we're really uh, proud of. Uh, currently we have 270 student organization, you know, 200 plus intramural club sports team. Uh, 16 D1 and D2, our men's and women's hockey team are D1, uh, but all the other sports are D2. So a lot of, um, you know, ways for students to find their um, friends, um, you know, a lot of ways for you to find people who share similar, um, you know, mindset or maybe thinking as you. Uh, but other like, um, we also have opportunities for students to create their own organization as well. Uh, student to faculty ratio just been updated 17 to 1 right now. Um, and then just a few other information. I know uh, we have roughly 500 plus uh, faculties at UMD right now. Uh, and also it kind of breaks down the ratios, but I think we will be covering that during Q&A. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, specific questions about UMD, um, I'm happy to answer that in the Q&A later. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Aisha Gonzalez. I use she, her, her pronouns. Um, I'm the Associate Director for Diversity and Inclusion with McAllister College. Um, so McAllister is located in St. Paul. Um, and one of the nice things to know about that is that we are one of the few liberal arts and sciences college located directly in an urban area across the country. Um, so it really allows our students to gain access to so many different opportunities just because of our location. Uh, where we are situated, we're about four miles from downtown St. Paul in the state capital. Um, and about seven miles from downtown Minneapolis. So within eight miles of campus, there are about 200 different internship sites that our students are able to receive active academic credit for um, by participating in. Um, so that location is a really important factor in our overall education here. Um, McAllister is an institution that really is value driven um, and mission driven. And so what we mean by that is that um, our core values of multiculturalism, global citizen, uh, citizenship and civic engagement are all things that are gonna drive every aspect of your experience while you're here. Um, so for us, for example, about 33% of our students who are from the US are BIPOC, um, so Black, Indigenous, or people of color. 15% um, of our students are international students. Uh, you'll find that 24% of our students hold citizenship, citizenship outside of the US, um, and they speak collectively like 76 different languages, which is pretty amazing. Um, and we've been flying things like the United Nations flag on our campus since 1950. And so all these things are not only physically represented on our campus, but also within your classes, the academic courses that you take, um, all the extra activities that you'll be a part of as well. Um, in total, there are about 2,100 students on our campus, and our average class size is only 16. Um, for the most part, you're not going to have classes more than 20. In fact, it's very rare, and it's usually like intro to psychology, because everybody wants to take intro to psychology. Um, but outside of that, you're going to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention. 
Um, because we are an undergraduate only institution, um, you're not going to be fighting for space in things like research labs or for those internships. All those opportunities are geared right towards you as an undergraduate student, which helps when it comes to looking at um, uh, careers and jobs after college or graduate school as well. Um, in total, there are about 39 majors on campus, 40 minors, and 10 concentrations, and about a third of our students do double major because they are so interesting. Um, and oftentimes, because of the way that our uh, programs are set up to be very interdisciplinary, is that you find that you're already taking classes in those areas anyway. And so uh, being a psychology major who also is a minor in Spanish is something that's easy to do. If you want to do pre-med, be an athlete, and then also uh, you know, study biology, you can do that. Um, so it gives you a lot of opportunities to really think about the things that interest you and not having to feel like you have to choose in between either one. Um, we do have over 106 student organizations, which is a lot for our student body size. Um, but like many of us here have said today, you know, the nice thing about that list is that it's not an end all be all. So if you have an idea or a community that you want to build on campus, you are more than welcome are going to have the resources to do so while you're here. Uh, we do have 19 NCAA Division III uh, varsity programs. So again, no athletic scholarship there. But the nice thing to know is that we do meet 100% of demonstrated need across the board for all of our admitted students. So whether you are um, a US citizen, uh, documented or undocumented, or you are an international student, uh, we are gonna work with you for that financial aid size so long as you submit all the required materials. Um, in addition to being 100% of demonstrated need met, uh, we are also test optional permanently. Um, so uh, this was actually something that we were planning to do before COVID anyhow, um, but that definitely made that decision just all that much more easier uh, to make sure that we have access for folks in this process. Um, and we no longer have an application fee either. And so really thinking about how do you apply without those barriers. So if you have any questions on any of that, feel free to let me know. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Shia and I'm the Multicultural Admission Counselor at the University of Northwestern. Really excited to be a part of this today and help answer any questions regarding to you and W. So getting right into it, we have about over 75 um, undergraduate majors. We have about 10 graduate majors and then you can also build your own major. And that is through interdisciplinary studies. And so if there's something that you're not quite looking for, you, um, you know, it's not quite a major that you wanna get into, you can put a couple classes together and really get that approved through our interdisciplinary studies. So that's pretty cool there. Um, we do have a lot, we have a smaller community, about 1,700 undergrad students, and the average class size is 22, ratio is about 16 to 1, but I think we really are proud about that small community that we do have, that because you do get that mentorship, not just in the classrooms, but you get it outside of the classrooms as well. You know your peers, you know your professors, and I know that this was said amongst some of our counselors today, but that is something that we really love here at Northwestern, and a lot of our students love when they come visit our campus. And as an introvert student, when I was a student, I was, an I was a more of an introvert. I think that was really important to me because I didn't really just want to get lost in the numbers. I think that's really good to think about as you are looking at schools and seeing what's a good fit for you because the more you think about that, the more you set yourself up for success. Um, and so we do have ACSIC scholarship. It's an urban leadership. And so that's basically a full ride scholarship. And so that's through Urban Ventures and they partner with five other schools. So basically, I think the cool thing about that is if you're doing PSEO and you've already done completed two years of college, then you can basically double major and get that the cost all paid for. And for nursing, there's additional classes. All of the nursing classes get paid for as well too. So that's a really awesome uh, scholarship. And again, as I mentioned, they partner with five other schools that are also a part of MNAC as well. So that's pretty amazing because if you apply to ACSIX and you basically apply to all the schools. And so it is a very competitive leadership scholarship and it's focused in the urban areas. And so it's all about students who are wanting to take their degree and go back and impact their communities. And so that's pretty awesome there. We have about over 40 clubs that are headed by students. And again, it's fairly easy to start any kind of club here at Northwestern. If you just have a couple of friends and you want to start a club, then you basically get that approved by Student Life. But we have anything from knitting to Land X to Smash, uh, Smash Bros Brothers. And um, we have like Asian Student Fellowship. There's just like a ton of clubs that you can be a part of here at Northwestern to really get involved in community and get to know other students. And then of course we have opportunities that you can study all over the world, anywhere from Japan to Ireland to Scotland. We have China. Uh, we actually have a Chinese recruiter who goes to China twice here. So that's pretty amazing as well. Um, Spain, Russia, but there's just a ton. And then if there's a place that you students do wanna go, then you basically just work with our gold ministries department and they really help to see if there's a curriculum overseas that you can be a part of. And then we have student leadership involvement and this is kind of like a, a wide variety. You can be involved literally in any part of campus, whether that's residence life, global engagement, 
student government and we do have a leadership scholarship that students can apply to as well and we encourage all students to apply to that one because we understand that leadership looks different for every situation in every family and so we want a variety of leadership on our campus as well so that's great there and then we are division three for varsity sports and our application opens tomorrow actually <laughs> august 11th and we are test optional for year 2021 so that's just a little short blurb of UNW. thank you all and we're going to get jump right into the question in um, the panel here uh, for discussion. Uh, it sounds like some folks might have got sparked with a question about ECT or SAT. <laughs> so for those folks that didn't get a chance to um, highlight what what's the requirement of your school, um, if you could just say your name and your institution so that folks can know again, and then we'll start answering our questions here. Yeah. Wonderful. I'll, I'll jump in. Jordan from Lake Superior College based in Duluth. And we actually have what's called open enrollment, which means you do not have to have a minimum ACT, SAT, AccuPlacer score, anything like that. One of the things we do look at is that after you apply, uh, it's a really quick process. Actually, it takes like 10 or 15 minutes to do it online. You send your transcripts in your like high school transcript and your college transcripts. If you attended any colleges or have any college courses in your rep repertoire, and if you also apply during our free application months, you wouldn't have to worry about a fee. So one of the things is we don't require you to have a specific score. If you're looking to go into a certain program, like one of our nursing programs or health programs, it might have a recommended ACT score. And if it's a little bit lower, then we'll say, hey, what about your AccuPlacer? Or hey, we'll check out your GPA or maybe what you got in like a math or a or a like English class back in high school. And we might be able to look at it for multiple different measures. So. We don't have a specific score requirement to get into the college. Next, um, so Ana Mendoza, University of Wisconsin La Crosse. So we did switch to optional ACT uh, slash ACT test scoring. Um, when you are applying for the application, if you're not sure, there is a I don't know or I'm not sure um, selection that you can select. Or if you're having any concerns or questions about your ACT score you could always give us a shout and talk to one of the counselors here in admissions and we can kind of talk over those concerns that you may have about your ACT. Um, we are still requiring it for merit-based scholarships in our office. Um, so if you want to qualify for being considered for the merit base, you would have to submit your ACT or SAT score with that. I mean, that's just a, a competitive and an academically competitive reduced program for students. How can I visit your campus virtually? I can, oh, Aisha, you wanna go first? Uh, sure, um, so, I mean, I feel like it's gonna be a similar, similar answer across the board, right? And a lot of us are hosting things online. Um, so the best way to find out these opportunities is to go to our websites individually and see uh, what types of programs that we have. Um, some of them will be more expanded, like larger open houses, for example. Um, and some of them might be um, smaller things like information sessions or uh, guided tours with ambassadors, um, things of that sort. Um, and those plans keep changing as we find out more information as COVID evolves. And so it's always good just to continuously check back at the schools that you're looking at. Um, but I know for us, for example, we're currently right now in the thick of planning our fall um, virtual events because we won't be hosting um, them online or um, in person, I mean, this, this year or this fall. Yeah, kind of the same. Um, so Noam from UMD uh, Duluth. Um, so we are hosting on-campus visit uh, Monday and Friday. Um, so yeah, the best way is to actually go online and sign up. Uh, but we are also hosting face-to-face -face, uh, visit. I'm actually in office today, my first day after five months. So um, yeah, it's, it's really different, but uh, we are hosting just for UMD, we are hosting uh, in-person visits. However, um, very limited capacity. So we're booked for August, but September, if in case you're interested, uh, definitely go online and sign up um, online as well. But we have both options for students right now. I'll go next as well. Um, Shia Moore from the University of Northwestern. We also have both options. We have a virtual tour or a virtual meetup. Um, via our website, or you can come on campus. So you would go on our website and then you'll just um, schedule a visit with us per the usual way. And then you can come to campus, have a tour, you can meet with um, a counselor and even a financial aid counselor as well too. And so you just sign up for 
you can just, you know, check whatever you want to do and then we'll just connect with the students and families to let you know, like, if that's doable, if you can do that or we'll do a virtual presentation or a virtual meeting with like a professor or something like that, but yeah. Okay, I can go next. Um, Anna from UWL. We are doing a handful of things. Uh, so we're doing virtual where you can do a virtual tour and that's right on our website. You could just find it right underneath our admissions webpage um, and click visit us and you'll find the virtual tour. Uh, we also have uh, students coming to campus having a in-person tour with us. It is a limited capacity similar to some of the counselors here. Uh, we are at 15 individuals is what our limit is. Um, and then we also have curbside pickup. So if you're not comfortable being within any sort of capacity of a group of individuals, um, you can just call us and let us know. We'll set up a whole folder for you. Um, and we have QRs go, uh, QR codes sorry, that you can scan with your, either your Snapchat or your iPhone um, and kind of take a tour around campus and it'll give you different information on each building as well. Um, we aren't having one-on-one -on -one in person. We are having that virtual, I like to call them little coffee dates. Um, and, <laughs> and then if you have any other questions or concerns of how to connect with us, you could always reach out to us as well, but most of that is gonna be right on our webpage. Yeah, and same thing for Lake Superior College, very similar to what everyone else said. We are having kind of, I would say, one-on-one -on -one tours that go around campus. So if you are interested in touring the campus or any of the four campuses that we have in, in Duluth itself, we're more than happy to have you. Basically, we just fill out a tour request form, reference some days and times that work for you, and then we basically reach out to you and just kind of verify that it works for everyone's schedule. Uh, we are having all of the, I would say, safety protocols that are in place. So before you'd come, you'd actually fill out a, oh, what can I think of it? A, a healthy, a health safety assessment, basically, which we would love for you to do online beforehand. If you don't get the opportunity to do it before the tour, you can come, we'll have a tablet ready, or we can have you use your smartphone to fill that assessment out before we, we get started. But we're doing one-on-one -on -one tours. You're able to see all the campus. We're kind of limited on going into classrooms per se. Some of them are still a little closed off right now, but that will probably open up more so when the fall semester starts, August 24th. But if you're interested in seeing any of the campuses, we'd be more than happy to have you. And you can reach out to me personally for more information or that link if you'd like it. Thank you, everyone. Um, next question that came up is, what specific student of color scholarships do you offer at your institution? I'm happy to go first. So we do have one, um, it is a merit scholarship. So it's awarded automatically um, under consideration in the admissions process. Uh, but it's the Leo Todd Suzuki scholarship, which is named after um, some of our um, alumni of color um, who had some pretty incredible stories. Um, so I encourage you to do our, our virtual information session because we'll talk to you, tell you all about it. Um, but yes, we have the one um, and that's not in, in um, place of any of our other merit scholarships that we offer. That's just one of the scholarship programs that we have. I can go. Uh, so Nawang from UMD admissions office. Um, I do work specifically with our BIPOC um, population right now. Uh, we don't have any specific scholarships, so to say, you know, if, unfortunately, you know, if you're a BIPOC or if you identify as a BIPOC student, um, you, you get this amount dollar. We don't have that, but we do have a PDSS scholarship, um, which you do have to meet, it is merit based. So you do have to meet a 3.6 GPA and it's awarded at 6,000 uh, over the four years. So that's a little bit more specific, um, you know, uh, academic scholarship. However, it is still based on merit based. So you do have to have that GPA. Uh, but other than that, uh, our collegiate units, once you're a student at UMD, uh, it does definitely opens up the door quite a bit. Um, you know, um, there are certain, um, GPA criteria, however, some are very specific, uh, depending on who is donating the money. Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions, like you said, um, everyone, please you know, contact the counselor and we're happy to help you and kind of we can walk you through that process of admissions. Thank you. Yeah. I can go. Um, very similar, we don't have a, or sorry, on Mendoza, UWL, um, but very similar, we don't have a specific uh, scholarship that is the same every year. Um, we have 
kind of like numerous donors that come and compile together and create scholarships yearly from that. Um, and so what it is, is you would go on our foundation scholarship database and you would need your GPA for this um, and then type in kind of some keywords so you can be a multicultural student and it will populate all of the donors and scholarships that are available that year for you. Um, and then also when you become a student at UWL, if you're affiliated with our Multicultural Student Services office and you qualify for their grant, they have a yearly grant as well too. So you could always talk to them about it and they will help you kind of establish that when you're here as a student on campus. We also have a student support services office that um, a lot of times if you're first generation like I was, uh, you would be affiliated with that department and they have yearly scholarships that are different as well, uh, depending on the donors for that year. I can go next. Um, Shia Mo, University of Northwestern. We don't have any specific multicultural scholarships, but I would say our most diverse former candidates come through Act 6 because it is focused, again, on the urban community. So we get about four or 500 applicants each year for that that we have to filter through. And so because, again, it's focused in the urban communities and we get a diverse um, amount of students that come from that area. So that's what we really enjoy. That's why I love, I love meeting all, all types of students um, through that process there and it's really amazing. So um, I would say we have that. We used to have a multicultural grant, but we don't have that anymore. Um, but we do have a Keratins grant through like financial aid where if you're a first gen student, then you automatically get 75% of tuition, so covered. And I, I'll wrap it up. Jordan from Lake Superior College in Duluth. And when it comes to our application, or not application, but our, excuse me, our scholarship process, what's really kind of neat about it is that for all the students that are attending LSC, we're like, hey, go into our LSC Foundation website, create, you know, a, some basic information about yourself, basically login information. And after you fill out all the basic information about yourself, What's really cool is that the system that we have set up weeds out everything. Um, it weeds out the scholarships that you don't need to apply for, but tells you, hey, here are all the scholarships you can apply for. So that's one of the really cool things that I always let students know is that, hey, if you're a senior this year, I always recommend students to start applying now. You can actually apply now for the fall of next year. And then once you're finally an accepted student, you'll then start getting emails of for LSC standpoint, when our scholarship window opens up. So our scholarship window opens up usually in February and it lasts for about three weeks, being that we're already pretty, I would say very affordable for a college standpoint, we have a, a window when it comes to our, our scholarships. But another cool thing too is that I always let students know, it's like, hey, you know, connect with our diversity, our diversity director on campus, go to the Intercultural Center because they also have some connections as well. I should say they have additional connections for other scholarships that maybe the college doesn't have, but are in the community. So it's always great to know what is available for you and additional scholarships that you can sign up for and utilize towards the college. Thank you all. Um, also, Raul from Manac. Um, I would like to plug that Manac also does have an or uh, has a scholarship. So our organization um, does have uh, scholarships that we're able to provide to students that will go to any member institution. So all of the colleges and universities that are here today are member institutions. So when you apply for a Manac scholarship um, and it is awarded, you can um, take that with you to any one of these organizations. Um, the next one, and this is from a parent. Um, do you have a parent program to help first time parents to learn about the college admissions process? Uh, so I can go, uh, UMD, Nguang. Uh, so uh, one thing I did uh, in this position, so I started in this position last year. So we hosted a fall multicultural experience day and then spring we have a open house. Um, where we invite students um, plus parents and guests, so they can bring whoever they'd like. Uh, it's an opportunity for um, students to not just hear from admissions counselor, but what I we, what we did is we invited other faculties and staff of color on campus and a panel full of students from different backgrounds. Um, and also we had a Spanish, um, uh, one of our staff uh, uh, just to translate uh, and into, into I can never pronounce it, interpreter, you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> okay, 
third language. English is my third language, challenges. Um, but that really helped. I think a lot of parents, um, and that was, to be honest, an eye-opening for myself because there was, I had all of these assumptions and, you know, and I, I kind of realized that you have to really start from the beginning. Um, so that was an opportunity where we had a separate parent program where, you know, we addressed questions that they had. But they, at the end, we also had an opportunity for them to fill out the application. So you can sit down with us, fill out, fill out the application. So um, that is something we had. But I think going virtual now, if parents, you know, have access to internet, I think something we're looking forward is to provide a workshop, not just about FAFSA, but also the application process to uh, families and guests in the future as well. Uh, but that's something we did in the past, and I think um, it did help uh, parents to kind of understand what is major, what is a minor, what is 120 credits, uh, you know, the, the label that they see uh, about the cost, do they have to pay that on the first day? Um, so yeah, definitely that, that's something we did. Thank you. I can go next. Uh, so Ana Mendoza, UWL. Uh, we have a couple of different things. So we have some things before you even start as a student, uh, very similar to, to probably other counselors here as well too. Uh, we have something that's called a Latinx day. Uh, I was first generation and so this Latinx day was really awesome when it was developed. What it is, it's a whole conference that is held in Spanish. Um, and so you can bring your family members and you can learn just about college and not only just UWL, but just college in general. Um, so we wanna make sure that you're successful wherever you go. And so it's always kind of important to have your parents on board, especially if you are first generation, it can be kind of tricky to explain different things. Um, if you're like, well, you know, they're needing my social security or they're needing your social security or things like that. I know my parents were like, what? I'm not giving you that. Um, so it definitely is nice to have those kind of conferences uh, to be able to explain why that's needed um, and kind of to develop that trust with you and your parent in college in general. Um, and then once you are admitted, we have a START program. It's a one day program. We bring you back to campus. We get you registered for your classes and we also have kind of a mini orientation for transition for you and um, we separate you from your parent and your parent has their own orientation for transition as well so they can have their own individual questions within that space um, so that way you're not embarrassed when your parents are asking a bunch of questions <laughs> um, and then we also have a family and student uh, program office uh, so what they do for you is they continue to update your family members, like what's, you know, going on on campus, uh, things like that. And if your parents had any questions to uh, about the university, they could always call that office and speak to them directly as well, too. Yeah, yeah I can go next. Similar to, you know, what the other universities referenced also very similar one of the things that we would usually be holding over the summertime is orientation for new and incoming students that was put off to be online orientation this whole past summer and it's the same thing so whether you were coming on campus you and your you and your parent or you and your you know group would usually come on campus and there would be that time where you would separate where students would be probably registering for classes or maybe doing the AccuPacer if you had to do the AccuPacer test or if you wanted to do the AccuPacer. And then your parents or guardians would then go into kind of parent orientation. What we have right now is parent, or parent orientation available online. So parents are able to go through that and watch that as they, you know, see fit. And then they're also, you know, they're also able to connect with our, you know, our advisors, with our financial aid specialists, and if there ever wants to be a group time to sit down and ask questions, I think this newer world of having so many virtual meetings actually does provide some, some helpful aspects to that. So you can always book a meeting online, find a time that works for your calendar, and then maybe it's you and your parents sitting down to chat with financial aid or the advisor to talk about classes. I can go next, Shia Moore, University of Northwestern. So we as counselors do specifically work with families as well through the student admissions process. And so we are basically the to go person and we direct parents and students um, per question that they have. And then of course we do have a parent relations department and that's before and 
even while the student is a student here at Northwestern. And so you get connected with our parent relations team, um, give me updates. If you have questions, anything like that, then um, basically that's your parent relations team. They reach out to all of our parents um, on that there that you can, parents can sign up for on orientation or even in the summer while we're holding events as well too. Yep, I'm echoing a lot of what folks are saying. Um, for all of our virtual programs, parents are certainly welcome um, and support people are welcome to attend. Um, in fact, we had a series of summer workshops uh, this year that we hosted online um, that were really geared towards talking about the different aspects of the college admissions process. Um, and usually we ask for the students information when you sign up for these things, uh, just because that's who we'll be working with mostly through this process. Um, but that doesn't mean that as parents that you're not you know, going to be able to attend because you certainly can. Um, and so even with that, we've had some that are geared even towards a college counselor, like high school counselors as well, to help support the work that they do in serving families too. And so um, just looking on our website, thinking about what, what there is to offer. Um, most cases, again, they're open to anybody in the family. Um, very few times do we restrict it just to students. And usually that's because of space uh, reasons, you know, for example, with classroom visits, for example. Um, but outside of that, uh, there's often some type of parent component to some of these programs. Next question that came up, uh, so there's a couple of them we have here. So what is it like to live on campus and is it required? Yeah, so I can go first to UMD, Nawang. Um, so we do not require students to live on campus um, as a first year student. Um, so there's a separate housing application. For example, if you are interested in living on campus, um, you know, I think a it really depends on the students. However, I, I think uh, if you look at the data, it does help students to kind of transition smoothly. Uh, you know, if you're living on campus and you don't have to worry about cooking or like time management, it does help with that. However, it's not a requirement. Students can live in the residential halls or the on-campus apartments or completely off campus. Um, when it comes to living on campus, I think, um, you know, I'm not sure because I've never lived at UMD, so I'm not gonna make up something for the students, but I think a lot of students have said that it does help uh, not having to worry about food, you know, or what time to eat because you can just go to the cafeteria. Um, and I'll, I think it does help kind of, um, you know, making friends, you know, meeting people. Um, so those are some things it does help or going to classroom. For example, UMD is all connected to each other. So especially if you're living on campus in the rest halls, uh, you know, even for in winter, you can all uh, walk through the skywalks through each building. So I think it does help with that. But I think that's a good question to ask for in the future, if you do have opportunity to visit virtually, um, I, for example, our school has panels, student panels, who are here to answer those kind of questions about living on campus. But yeah. So McAllister does have a residential requirement. So we do require students live on in their first two years and then junior, senior year, you're welcome to live off campus if you'd like to. Um, and so with that, I mean, this year is a little different. Uh, we do have a lot more students who requested, um, you know, exemptions because of everything going on with COVID and we've been really flexible with that. Um, so I don't know how that might impact that requirement down the line. Um, but, uh, you know, our focus as a residential institution is to kind of give you that experience and that grounding while you're there, especially since a large number of our students are not actually from the area. Only 15% of our students come from Minnesota, which is great for Minnesota students because it kind of feels like an out-of-state um, college in that sense. Um, but for the folks that are new to the area and don't know it very well, to have, you know, to be able to build community in the halls is a really important part of that, um, that experience. Um, additionally, some of our first-year courses, which are required of all of our first-year students, do have a residential component. So the idea is that we want to make sure that you are taking what you're learning in the classroom and actually using it in real life um, or being able to apply it. So for example, uh, one that we offered in the 2016 election cycle was a class about um, media um, and reporting within um, you know, national elections. And so being able to get together and watch the debates together was a really important piece of that. Um, being able to have conversation outside the classroom were really important components. Um, and so that residential piece is, is, is really huge and very much a, a big part of our experience at McAllister. Yeah, I can go. Uh, my name is Ana Mendoza, UWL. So we have something similar. We do require students to live on campus the first year. Um, very similar to you know what has been said is that it does create those establishments and connections with other peers. Uh, so it kind of it's nice because when you start going into your classes, you might recognize some of the individuals that live within your dorm. 
Um, it can be a little bit more comfortable that way. I know coming from an, uh, a high school where I knew like everybody uh, going to a college where I didn't know anybody, it was nice to have those familiar faces in my classes. Um, they do different activities to have like icebreakers for to say for students to get to know other people um, and make friends. I think that it also creates these different opportunities for you to know of different activities that are going on on campus um, and also be able to make those professional connections with RAs um, or other like peers that you may have within your dorm. So I do think that it's important. And also um, as a person that started to commute my second year, not by choice, um, but I was commuting 30 minutes to school and back. And I really lost time in that commute to be able to study. Um, so I had to be concerned with like, okay, I have to go home at this time to make it home by this time, you know, and it took that time and space out of my study habits. Uh, so it is nice to be able to just walk in our instance in our campus, walk five minutes from your dorm to the library um, and back and just like not have to worry about commuting at all, especially during winter times as well too. Go next, share more, UNW. Um, and so we do require students to live on campus unless they are commuting from a parent's home. And then if there are some extreme situations, you can file for an appeal and then they'll take a look at that to see if, yes, you can commute from home. And then also um, you can live off campus if you turn to one before the year um, school year starts. And so life on campus, um, I would, you know, just want to echo what some counselors said that it is very convenient because a lot of, we have over 800 jobs available here at Northwestern. So a lot of students do work on campus. They, you know, it's really easy to just, if they don't have a car, they can just walk right to campus and work. And, um, and then also with like the um, dining here as well, just, I mean, the dorms are really nice because they have their own kitchenettes. And in some of our dorms, you have like eight rooms, four bathrooms and their own kitchenette. So a lot of them are like apartment style too. And so it's really nice because it's like you're away from home, but at the same time, you have your own space, you know, if you don't want to really feel like you're on campus as well too. But I just know that the, the community life is so important here in Northwestern and students love the community life. And that's a big reason why they come here to Northwestern as well, is that there are, you know, those opportunities that you met, that you don't miss out on when building those relationships on campus. And there's those, um, I mean, you know, our dorming events are, are always open to commuters as well. And we do have commuting um, commuter ministry as well for our commuter students. But I would say that they do miss some kind of component or aspect in, in that relationship building too um, when living on campus compared to living off campus. And so, um, yeah. And Jordan Simpson from Lake Superior College. So Lake Superior College does not currently have dorms on campus. So living on campus is not required because there currently is no place to no place to do so. But what is really great about the Duluth area is that, and even LSD in general, is that there are multiple options for you. So if you know that you want a kind of a dorm style living, but there are programs here at LSC that really appeal to you that maybe aren't you know, available in the Duluth area at other colleges, What's really great is that if you want a dorm style experience, awesome. We've got a partnership with UWS, UW Superior, which is roughly like a 10, 15 minute drive from the campus that you can stay in their dorms and you could get on their meal plan if you wanted to, having breakfast and supper there, use their, use their I would say, oh, why can't I think of the word? Using their um, wellness center, if you will, but then you can be taking the classes and focusing in on that program that is at LSC. So we have that partnership just across the just across the bridge. But there's also a bunch of great off-campus living options in the Duluth area, and one of them being the Campus Park Summit Ridge, I would say, apartment complexes. And a lot of students from LSC go there. A lot of UMD students stay there and St. Scholastica students. So if you really want to connect with a variety of different college students and say you want to start here, get your first two years done, and then go to another college, you have that opportunity to connect with the other students that might be attending those colleges already. So you have kind of some fun opportunity to maybe have a dorm style experience, or you have the option to be in more of an apartment complex and really kind of experience a different lifestyle and, you know, a sense of, a sense of growing older. <laughs> Where can students find your application to your institution and how can they apply? Okay, I can go first. Um, 
So the application process for UMD is pretty simple. Uh, we don't have any preference. You can apply directly to UMD. Uh, we are accepting application for next year, so spring 2021 and also fall 2021. Uh, you can just go online d.umn.edu slash apply um, and we can send you the link as well if you're interested or you can use common app uh, you know if you're applying to multiple institution just not just in minnesota but all over the us i think common app is a great platform as well uh, for you the university of minnesota just to kind of plug in it's a unique opportunity because if you're applying to the university of minnesota twin cities for example and you want to share your app with other University of Minnesota campuses, you also have um, the opportunity to apply to UMD through that uh, shared app program as well. Um, and yeah, so that's our uh, application platform for students. We can go next, uh, Shiamura UNW. So you would apply directly on our website, unwsp.edu, because we do have a faith component that you uh, essay that students will have to fill out as well. So that's directly on our website. You just go on under the admissions tab and then apply now. And then you'll just fill out your application and submit your high school um, transcript. I can go next. Anna from UWL. Uh, very similar. So we are not on the Common App and you would have to go to our website directly to apply to UWL or you can go to apply.wisconsin.edu and do your application there as well. Um, and so we just need the application, the application fee, which is $25, uh, does have a section to go over fee waivers as well. So if you have any concerns or, or comments about paying that fee, you can definitely list that within that section and we can take care of you if you qualify. Um, and then just your transcript. And then if you choose to submit your ACT or SAT score, uh, we did open up nine days ago. Uh, so it is open, it's rolling. Um, but I do want you to hear me out is that I think the best time for students to apply is in September or right before Turkey Day, uh, because you're back in school and you have access to your counselors and you can ask questions about how to send a transcript, everything like that too. Uh, so don't feel like you're behind the game because you're not. Um, and so if you do have any questions, again, just give us a shout. I did do a little video run on our application. So you could always call and ask me for questions as well too, if you get kind of stuck throughout your application. Aisha with McAllister. So we um, are a Common App school. So we use the Common Application. Um, unless you are applying with QuestBridge, um, if you are a QuestBridge um, College Prep Scholar, we do. We are a College Maps institution, and so you can actually, if you're not matched with us um, or another institution, you can use your uh, QuestBridge in place of the Common App. Uh, but for most people that we're probably speaking to, Common App. Um, we do have many different deadlines in McAllister. So we have two rounds of early decision, which is a um, binding commitment. Um, so if you know that we're the one and you're ready to say yes to us up front, um, ED is great. Um, so there's a November 1st and a January 1st deadline. Uh, we also have early action. So for those who think we're great, but not sure they want to commit right away, um, early action is also helpful, also November 1st. And then we have regular decision, which is January 15th. So uh, just keep in mind that there are multiple deadlines. All of us listed on our website, though, you don't have to commit them to memory today. And Jordan from Lake Superior College, we are, I should say, our application is available online if you go to lsc.edu backslash apply. And one of the things I love about the application at LSC is it takes maybe 10 or 15 minutes to fill out online. What's also really cool is that if you're currently taking like college in the schools course or courses or maybe PSEO, you might be doing that already through maybe a local community technical college in Minnesota. If that's the case, you probably already have what's called a star ID. And that means that your star ID can be used to log in and your information might already be there. So you don't have much to fill out. So Lake Superior College is also one of the 37 Minnesota State Colleges, which maybe you're already taking classes at one of them. And what's really cool is that you will never have to request that transcript because we'll already have access to it. It all depends on which college you might be taking those secondary courses in. And if you have questions, if it is, if, it, if you'd have to request that transcript or not after applying, you're always welcome to reach out to us and we'd be happy to get you more info. Thank you so much. Thank you panelists for um, sharing all of your information and um, about talking a little bit more about your institution. 
Um, this does conclude um, the session today. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to share the contact information here for all of the uh, representatives that joined us today. Um, we hope that you're able to connect with them, follow up with them, um, go into a little bit more deeper information on what they talked about today, um, learn about their institution, visit them virtually, um, and connect with them because they're here to help support you through your college transition. Um, and if you're viewing us live today or on the recording, we hope that you're still able to connect with each of these panelists because they have, they shared some really great information today. So I thank you all so much. Um, and that is it for today. Thank you so much. Take care panelists. We'll see you later. Yeah. Bye everyone. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Bye.